some entertainment. When you want some culture, want to know what's happening. Grab your remote control, take a seat in your sofa. Get the beep of this native show. Yeah, man. Get the beep of this native show. Watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. Coming up in the news, government officials and dignitaries signing the Book of Condolences for Queen Elizabeth II in Grand Bahama today. Also, we get an update on the Freeport Aviation Development Board's first meeting. And just one day shy of the PLP government's one-year anniversary, one local senator shares why he believes the government is on the right track. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Good evening and welcome to the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. I'm Ramiko Knowles. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping the news as people around the world mourn the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Condolences are pouring in for the royal family. Officials and dignitaries here on Grand Bahama paid their respect by signing the Book of Condolences, remembering the longest reigning monarch in British history. Our Simone Davis was there and filed this report. During the official signing for the Book of Condolences for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, taking place at the Harold de Gregory Building today, government officials, religious leaders, members of the judiciary, and other executives paid their respects during this morning's event. Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Ginger Moxie, explaining the importance of recognizing the Queen's passing and participating in the book signing. It's important for Grand Bahama Island in particular, the Queen visited Grand Bahama back in 1994, and I think it was a historical occasion. And for the residents of Grand Bahama, we felt that it was important to allow the opportunity for the signing to be here. There are many people who are here who have British, you know, descent, and also the residents in general. Executives from the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Sarah and Henry St. George, reflecting on the legacy of the Queen. And the Queen, she embodied so much, you know, she transcended all differences um, and brought everyone together uh, as a unifier. And I think that's such an example to all of us. And we all so deeply admired her courage, her strength, her sense of duty. Uh, I can't help but thinking how lucky we were in the Bahamas that she visited us uh, and in Grand Bahama. It was, uh, it was a great moment when she came um, a few years ago and then she sent her grandson in her Platinum Jubilee year earlier this year, uh, Prince William, now the Prince of Wales, and, uh, and his wife Catherine and that was a huge honour. Religious leaders, government senators, and judicial officials all singing the Queen's praises, noting that it was imperative for them to have their signatures recorded in the Book of Condolences. When we reflect on the life of Queen Elizabeth II, she is one who has served the Commonwealth of Nations with much grace and dignity. She's a woman of stellar character, impeccable integrity. It was an important duty of mine to pay my last respects to the Queen. She is our head of state, and it is just a portion of my gratitude to her service. Well, um, as I reflected on the passing of Her Majesty, I'm reminded of many great women throughout the course of our history, and I, you know, so often I confine my thoughts to Bahamian, great Bahamian women. And as we look at history and her contributions to civil organizations, to really humanity, she has really done a remarkable job. It's also a generational significance because uh, I grew up with my parents talking about the Queen. And as for King Charles III, now assuming his position on the throne. There's a, a Bahamian colloquialism that says, chip does not fall far from the block. So I'm hoping that he's a chip of a good woman. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Simone Davis.
Meantime, the conversation surrounding whether the Bahamas should remain under the sovereignty of the United Kingdom intensifies as the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has brought it to the forefront once again tonight. We speak with a clergyman who says he hopes the country moves to become a republic soon. Since the passing of Queen Elizabeth II, discussions have mounted concerning whether or not the country should remain under the monarch or become a republic. Pastor of First Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Keith Russell says the decision to become a Commonwealth nation was dictated by the times. Part of it is racial. There were persons in the country who did not believe that black Bahamians uh, could actually keep a country afloat. And as a result, they thought that we should, if you're going to go independent at all, certainly beyond the, the Commonwealth. And then you had the, the matter of um, whether or not uh, we could maintain stability in our nation because a lot of people were very adamant against becoming independent. He says protection played a role in the decision as well. But today he argues that it does not benefit the Bahamas to remain a Commonwealth nation. Uh, we have proven now over these many years that we're able to govern ourselves. And uh, for those persons who thought that black people were incapable of doing so, we have proven them wrong. Uh, I don't think we need uh, to be protected by, by Britain anymore for any particular reason. So I would think that becoming a republic, for me, uh, is the uh, next step in a process to complete freedom. He explains some of the benefits of becoming a republic. You don't have to send things to the Privy Council as the, the last arbiter of what is just. Um, you, you, have, uh, you could rid yourself of a, a governor general. Of course, you could have your president now who's going to be the... Uh, non-executive uh, uh, head of state and I, and I think that it gives people a sense of we are moving forward even more towards uh, self uh, um, uh, governance and also uh, understanding a sense of self and developing a sense of who we really are as Bohemians. And while some are perturbed regarding the decision to pay homage to the Queen through a national holiday for reasons such as colonialism, he says he understands. However, he notes that at this time the Bahamas is and remains a Commonwealth country, therefore she is owed the respect. The, the voices that are saying, yeah, you know, um, her, her legacy is tainted, absolutely, uh, and, and their voices should be heard and respected. Also, I think, uh, in this kind of uh, hybrid nation which we live, uh, you have to also uh, give uh, credence to those individuals who say, well, we must respect the Queen and her death. But he believes that someday the Bahamas will become a republic nation. It's about, it's about freedom, it's about sense of self, it's about having agency, um, that I can decide to do X, Y, Z without having to consult you know, any foreign power. Now in an interview with the local daily, the Prime Minister said that the removal of the British monarch as head of state will require a constitutional referendum, noting that he cannot do so without consent of the people. Now the Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable I. Chester Cooper, announcing a board for the Freeport Aviation Development Company last month. The DPM naming members of the board who will be charged with the swift redevelopment of the Grand Bahama Development, the Grand Bahama Airport, rather. He notes that he is aware of the need for the airport on the island. Chairperson Tara Ramming says the board has since had their introductory meeting with the members of the board led by Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable I. Chester Cooper, and Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Ginger Moxie. There were other um, senior members um, of the minister for Grand Bahama um, present at that time. And the minister just, this is the deputy prime minister, just spoke to us about his mandate and the concerns for, you know, the re, um, I guess, refurbishment um, of the old domestic airport as a temporary, um, you know, fix until such time is where further along with uh, selection um, for the PPP for the construction of the new airport. Ramming also noting that board members are still in the process of conducting assessments and will provide an update upon conclusion. We're waiting to receive like a board package that'll brief us on everything that's outstanding um, or pending. Um, so, you know, it's difficult to say if we haven't assessed, um, you know, thoroughly um, where they are as the um, 
Fremont Development Company. So in terms of what our plans are, it is that, you know, we're all committed to carrying out our duties with due care and diligence. And I'm a Grand Bahamian, and so I know how important it is to the economy of Grand Bahama um, for us to have a fully functioning airport. Now, Raming says there is no definitive date as to when the board will meet again. Well, in other news, as the island prepares for an economic and touristic rebound, the two business owners are merging their skills and creativity to bring the nightlife back to Grand Bahama tonight. They are sharing some plans they believe is also crucial to the success of this island. Jolanda Thompson reports. Restoring the nightlife and entertainment has become the new focus for businessmen Nat Cambridge and David Wallace. The two are partnering together to have a slew of events geared towards revitalizing the economy on the island. Proprietor of Nat Cambridge Presents, an entertainment and artist management company, Nathaniel Cambridge says that one of his most notable work was season one of Spoken Word Poetry Night. He's back with season two, which begins on Thursday night. On Thursday, September the 15th, right here at Pirates Cove, and we're inviting all poets and artists to come along and share their poetry and artistry. On Friday night, the 16th of September, is a live music, live music Friday nights. It's called Friday Nights Live here at Pirates Cove, and it's going to be featuring the First Taste Band. The First Taste Band is a multi-genre pop band that plays live music of all genres, especially Bahamian music. Cambridge says that the entertainment industry in Grand Bahama is an important component in the life of the city. It creates opportunities for Bahamians to earn a living. Right now in Grand Bahama, most artists that performed during the 70s, 80s, and 90s are working jobs, carpenters, masons, security guards. These are talented people that have worked in the industry for years and not even had the chance to pass it down because the industry was stopped. So it's also an economic boost for the island. So entertainment is a passion for me for that reason, among others. Pirates Cove and Zipline Water Park owner David Wallace is pleased to be a part of reviving the industry. He believes that these events will give the mature crowd an opportunity to enjoy themselves in an open atmosphere. We are also working with NCP Entertainment to look at introducing um, karaoke one night and we are also looking at opening uh, a movie. A night like movie where we can set up a screen out here and persons can come and enjoy some of the talented, um, uh, or some of the talents. I'd like to bring in Sydney Poitier's um, first movie and have a wonderful evening. And we're also working with looking at doing a, a, a jet ski a poker run uh, along with uh, doing a Guy Fox night here at Pirate School. And so we are pleased and we're looking forward to this wonderful uh, event that will cause Bahamians. Uh, locally on the island to come out and enjoy it. The two men are advising the public to keep a lookout for their work as they set new grounds on Grand Bahama entertainment and nightlife. One of their biggest events is Vibe Fest, which is scheduled to host a number of Bahamian artists and musical renditions on November 5th. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Julanda Thompson. Sounds like fun, rather. Well, in tonight, in our part four of our series, we speak one-on-one -on -one with a prominent member of the Progressive Liberal Party government, Senator Kirkland Russell, as he details specific initiatives the government has led thus far amid public support and widespread criticism. He also shares his views on the Davis administration's performance one year later. Simone Davis has this report. months of public support and heavy criticism, the Progressive Liberal Party government continues to press forward as they approach one year in office. Senator Kirkland Russell speaking on the progress of the Davis Cooper administration in the past 12 months, stating that the Prime Minister has been focused on the important issues like climate change and managing the country's budget. Yes. The Prime Minister himself has been laser focused on truly bring in relief um, to the people of this country. He has been laser focused on climate change, um, understanding um, the effect of it, uh, not only the physical effect of climate change, 
but the financial effect of climate change. Yesterday, Free National Movement member and Central Grand Bahama MP Iram Lewis criticized the government, stating that he hasn't seen any improvement on Grand Bahama following Hurricane Dorian and the COVID-19 pandemic. Former Member of Parliament Frederick McAlpine echoed that point of view. Well, Senator Russell now responding to those sentiments. Let us look at the government handling of the COVID pandemic. Uh, it is indeed, you know, the, when you look at immediately, the government was able to open up the economy, um, cause businesses to once again be open and, 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 and thrive, um, and bring in again relief to the persons throughout the country. You know, the, the restaurants were open, the hardware stores, you name it. You know, and everybody was able to benefit. Then the government was able to to get our schools um, back to back to face to face with a very very smooth and effective transition. And while speaking specifically to Grand Bahama, Russell notes the island's progressive transformation under the Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Ginger Moxie. When we look at what is happening in Grand Bahama uh, with the, with the island-wide beautification program known as Beautiful Grand Bahama, um, indeed you see the transformation coming in our urban communities, um, the intention of, of the program is not just to beautify or clean the place, but the intention is to stimulate new economies, new revenue stream in those urban areas to move people from the unemployed employment status to the employment status and, 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 and to cause there to be a change you know, in these in these communities. Senator Russell says despite many obstacles and setbacks, the government has hit the ground running and has been working vigorously since September 16, 2021. The government has been working. Uh, again, there is much work to be done. Um, it is, um, the government has, has passed a lot of very um, effective um, new policies and, and bills. In our series finale tomorrow, we take a look back at all of the government's efforts and speak one-on-one -on -one with the Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Ginger Moxie, about the way forward for Grand Bahama. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Simone Davis. You are watching The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Stay with us. There's more news when we come back. Squire Men's Freeport has extended its summer sidewalk savings into September. Everything $30 and under every Saturday during September. Call them at 352-8816. Dollar Deals is a variety store. Uh, we cater mostly now to parties and party supplies. Uh, we also have novelty items. We carry things from balloons, a variety of balloons. We also carry the high-end Qualitex balloons that are very popular for persons that do balloon garlands and balloon setups to decorators. We also have toys for kids, school supplies, coin wrappers that's very 
popular on the island that people are looking for. Tumblers and candles. We have rose petals, feathers. For party items, we have loot bags for the kids. Napkins, plates, a variety of colors. We also carry cups and the cutlery for those items. So if you want to have a themed color party, we have those as well, those items. And we have items for baby showers and gender reveal. As a party supply store, we're all about celebrating every occasion. We also carry seasonal items such as Christmas, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and so much more. Our hours of operation are Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6, and on Sundays from 12 to 3. Our telephone contact is 602-7525, and our cell is 727-7228. We're located on West Atlantic Drive in the Old Sound Plaza. For designer shoes, sandals, accessories, and handbags, visit Steppin' Out, now at two locations, Old Sam's Plaza Freeport and top of the Hill Mackey Street, Nassau. Steppin' Out, when you want to put your best foot forward. Come and see the cabinets and countertops in stock now at Specialty Kitchen and Bath. Number 16 Oak Street, phone 688-9661. Have the following supplies on hand at the start of the hurricane season. A minimum three-day supply of water, which provides one gallon of water per person per day. Minimum three-day supply of non-perishable food items. Flashlights and extra batteries. A battery-powered radio to receive broadcasts that will keep you informed of the storm. A first aid kit. A seven-day supply of any prescribed medication. Don't be caught off guard this hurricane season. Be prepared. The King of the North is back. Power 104.5 FM. Your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. In news from the Education Beat, Eight Mile Rock High School recently received a complement of new teachers along with a new principal. Speaking with our Raven Davis principal, Albert Jones announces that additional programs are on tap for this year and adds that he's pleased with the school's national exam results. New principal at Eight Mark High School, Albert Jones, says the new academic year was off to a rather late start, as indiscriminate dumping and debris left behind after Hurricane Dorian posed a challenge. Despite this, much of it has been cleared, and he's voicing optimism about the new year. I believe that we're going to, to make the environment uh, see an, a great improvement. And that, that, that definitely helps with, with teachers feeling good as they come in, students feeling good as they come through the gate, instilling a sense of pride. And so one of our initiatives is going to be to keep our campus as clean as possible. In Blue Jay country, he says the excitement has not waned at all and he even offers some new announcements. We're well staffed and we're, we're ready to go. Um, we got um, some new programs coming on uh, on stream uh, because we didn't have a teacher last year in commercial arts. We, we have the requisite teachers at this time, and so we're looking forward to, um, to moving forward in a lot of different areas. In our BGCSE, we did superbly. Um, we increased our number of A's, a number of B's, a number of C's. Our A to C passes increased from 45% to 76%. That's almost... 30% increase. Now, June says while the BG CSE results have been stellar, the school is now eyeing ways of improving results at the BJC level. We had um, uh, a few more students that we'd like to who didn't show up to take exams. And so we have some improvement to do at our BJC uh, level in, in our examinations. But overall, our uh, passes from, from A to D were, were good. He says as a means of increasing enrollment and addressing those challenges, he strategized with educators to implement an effective after-school program. Teachers are, are prepared to, and they, they said to me, as soon as we want to do the, the after-school classes. And I said, well, you know, all the other schools um, are doing those after-school classes, and we can't compete with them if we're going to 
to just have our students leave right after school. Overall, the new principal says he feels right at home after previously serving as teacher at the school for close to two decades and also a former student. He adds that he looks forward to continued progress in academics and athletics. I'm excited uh, to be here and there is a lot of potential here. There's a lot of room for improvement. And so I'm excited for what the future is going to hold. But I'm also excited for the community because it, my Rock High School has always been the, the pulse of this community. For the Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition, I'm Raven Davis. Thanks, Raven. Your Thursday evening sports check is up next with Jay Philippe. I'm Jay Philippe and welcome to sports. High school sports expected to begin this month. First sport on the athletic calendar is volleyball. Here's Shane Stubbs. High school sports is back. The start of the GBSSAA's Oriole Nose Rosina Nesbitt High School Volleyball League is on the horizon. BMES junior and senior boys head coach Alan Hall says the team is ready to get back on the court. We expect to come out strong. Uh, the boys, both at the junior and senior level, have been coming out every day. Uh, getting warmed up, getting the practice sessions going. Practice sessions have been really good. We're coming off of a lot of uh, success uh, in the volleyball um, divisions, uh, both senior and junior level. And, you know, we look to continue and pick up right where we left off. The COVID-19 pandemic brought sports to a halt. And Coach Hall says it is great to have high school sports back. It's been a long time coming. Um, you know, it's been really down. The kids could not get out. Um, all of sports was... Um, they were suspended, but it feels really good to get back out there and to have the kids on the court. The BMES junior boys look to defend their crown as champions, while the senior boys hope to reach the mountaintop as champs this season. For ZNS Total Sports, I'm Shane Stubbs. School sports in Abaco also expected to return this year. Coach Steven Johnson says teams are in full preparation mode for competition. We have one private high school that was open last year. Um, two government high schools that are going full face-to-face -face this year, and then we have two other private high schools that open, so we're hoping to have five, five schools compete in basketball, volleyball, and track. Um, we're in the process of re-electing our board right now. We only have one person left from previous before Dorian. We will hope to start volleyball in high school in the next three weeks or two, and we're going to do volleyball, then basketball, and then track um, in that order for high school and um, elementary. When it comes to outdoors, none of our facilities have benches, lights, or fences yet, so it will be a struggle to play out there, but we're hoping that most of the games can be played in the gym and possibly that some of the outdoor um, facilities will be fixed for when we need them. And finally in sports, Game 3 of the WNBA Finals will tip off at 9 p.m. tonight. John Quell Jones and the Connecticut Sun will take on the Las Vegas Aces at home. The Sun looking to avoid a sweep with a win tonight to keep their championship hopes alive. That's a quick check on sports, ladies and gents. I'm Jay Philippe. Be blessed. Freeport Quality Exterminators Maintenance and Supplies Company. Providing commercial and residential pest control, professional cleaning, and lawn care maintenance. Call them today for an estimate. Island Bedding has the biggest summer sale going on right now. Special, special, special. Comforters, mattress pads, sheets, toppers, and best of all, mattress. 35% off, 45% off, 50% off. Oh my goodness. Special, people. <laughs> Saturday, September 24th, 8 p.m. It's all about Rake and Scrape Reloaded Part 7 at No Holds Bar and Lounge, Settler's Way. Admission is free. Come on down to Super Water Depot and Snacks. We sell and we deliver ice, drinks, purified water, alkaline water, and a variety of snacks. Your one-stop shop for all your snacks and water needs. 
Contact 242-820-2482. We are located number two, La France Plaza, Peachtree Street. Purified water, 50 cents a gallon. Alkaline water, 80 cents a gallon. Come on now, you can't beat that. We offer superb quality, superb taste, and superb service. Monday to Saturday, 8 to 8, and Sundays, 8 to 2. Superb water depot and snacks. Come on down. Here are some tips for having your home ready for a hurricane. Keep all trees and shrubs trimmed. Bring in all outdoor furniture, plants, or any other items that may become airborne due to high winds. Cover windows and doors with hurricane shutters or pre-cut plywood. Clear drains and gutters. And remember to secure important documentation in case you have to evacuate. Don't be caught off guard this hurricane season. Be prepared. The King of the North is back. Power 104.5 FM. Your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. My good buddy, Vincent Pettikin, you are our Facebook friend of the day. We want to say thank you so much for your support. We also want to say a happy work anniversary going out to our assistant production director here in the North, Lavender Lawanda Burroughs. Congratulations. That's a long time. And that concludes The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition on behalf of the entire news team. I'm Romico Knowles. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to stay tuned. The Bahamas Tonight continues. Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, the National Report, a family island scores a multi-million dollar deal. Local COVID deaths climb. Civil society and the church on marital rape. And government league basketball playoffs continue. The Bahamas tonight, the National Report starts now. This portion of the news is brought to you by BTC Super Fast Internet for Less. Best rate, no debate. Sign up today. Good evening, everyone. I'm Akash Lapinder, and welcome to the Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. Thanks for tuning in. It's a multi-million dollar investment. That's just the economic injection the economy needs. Forced to close due to the COVID-19 pandemic, a leading family island resort is preparing to reopen its doors in just a matter of weeks. And with that opening, jobs. Cleopatra Murphy has the story. After a more than two-year closure, Club Med Columbus Isle will reopen on October 22nd. Government signed a heads of agreement with Club Med officials at the office of the Prime Minister Thursday morning to facilitate the long-awaited reopening. More than $5 million was invested in renovations, and according to Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis, government has earmarked $3.5 million for infrastructural upgrades on San Salvador that includes clinics. We had to upgrade the, the water system to ensure that we are able to provide water to Club Med and the residents. Um, we also had to upgrade the electric, electrical uh, system as well. And um, work that had been stopped at the airport has to continue and the, all those will be ready for the reopening of Club Med. More than 40 years in the Bahamas and 30 years on San Salvador, Senior Vice President of Development and General Counsel for Club Med Eileen Kett anticipates the resort will continue to be an economic boost to the island, attracting airlift and tourists. And we expect to bring over 15,000 international clients to the island each year. Even more importantly, reopening the Club Med there allows us to employ Bahamians. And I was talking with our human resources team just this week, and we expect over 70% of the Bahamians who worked at Club Med prior to the closure to come back to San Salvador and work for Club Med again. Ken expects 250 Bahamians will be employed working directly for Club Med and third-party suppliers. This is after nearly 200 staff members were terminated when the property closed due to COVID-19 in January 2021. The nation's leader says its impact on the economy and community level has been vast. Club Med's investment in, in San Salvador 
is north of $100 million to date. Um, and the operating and the monthly expenses, I think, exceeds more than $15 million a month. And so you can see the economic impact that that um, the opening of Club Med will have on our island. It specifically um, helps our island, but more generally, it helps the whole Bahamas. With the heads of agreement now signed, Kat says she looks forward to writing Club Med's next chapter in the Bahamas. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Cleopatra Murphy. Also in Salvador, residents not the only ones with beaming smiles today. The same to be said for another group of homeowners whose dreams were realized with the presentation of keys to one of life's biggest investments. Carla Palma has the details. Six Bahamians are the newest first-time homeowners of the Pinecrest subdivision in the Southern District here in New Providence. Among them, a teacher, clerk, a finance, tourism, and a healthcare professional, as well as an oil industry tradesman. Precious Store is among that group. I am a single parent and I cannot begin to say how becoming a homeowner is just overwhelming and amazing. I commend this government for not only allowing Bahamians but allowing young Bahamians to have the opportunity to be a homeowner. The best part the best part of this experience is watching my daughter look up to me and call, call me an achiever and she wants to be like her mom. These newest homeowners joined eight other Bahamian families in the Pinecrest community, presented keys to their new homes back in May in a housing project started by the government in January this year. In the coming months, they too will be on hand to welcome new neighbors, as right now over 20 additional homes are under construction. I'm advised that not long after the 16th of September, 2021, the list of applicants at the Bahamas Mortgage Corporation under our proposed housing scheme already exceeded 3,500. And I'm, I'm hearing that is much, much, much more that has been in since we announced and acting to show that, you know, we don't just talk, we... <laughs> yeah. For this administration, led by Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis, home ownership is viewed essential as one of the basic forms of human empowerment. Not only are homes being built here in New Providence, but Eleuthera and Abaco as well. In the view of the Progressive Liberal Party, access to affordable housing ranks right up there with universal access to quality and affordable health care and universal access to education. These are essential public goods and services that help to build up the common good, build intergenerational wealth, and improve the quality of our lives while advancing the public interest. Housing Minister the Honorable Jill Beth Colby Davis is touting the affordability of the homes with a starting price tag of $169,000. While government is committed to creating greater opportunities for home ownership, we understand that there must also be a shift by members of the public towards home ownership. And we do not intend to criticize Bahamians for their financial practices, but we must note that the path to home ownership for far too many Bahamians is limited by significant unsecured consumer loans. At the end of this month, it's expected that 12 more persons will receive keys to their new homes here. Once this housing project is completed, 47 homes will have been constructed. In Pinecrest Subdivision for the Bahamas tonight, I'm Carla Palmer. In other news, the Prime Minister's office issuing a statement on what it terms the misinformation surrounding Wednesday's Parliament proceedings. Those proceedings were convened to allow the Prime Minister, as well as the leader of the opposition, the opportunity to formally offer condolences to Her Majesty Queen Ch King Charles III and, by extension, the royal family.
No other legislation was on the agenda. The statement further noting that there is no draft bill regarding changes to the country's citizenship or immigration laws, adding that the only such draft bill was done under the Minnesota administration in 2018. Well, King Charles III spending the day at his Highgrove home following his whirlwind tour of the UK following the Queen's death last Thursday. After making the long track from Balmoral Castle in Scotland, the body of the late sovereign continues to lie in state at Westminster Hall as thousands of mourners queue for more than four miles to view her coffin. The 24-hour exercise will continue until Monday morning, 6.30 a.m. UK time, ahead of the Queen's state funeral at 11 a.m. It's expected that there will be a national two-minute silence at the end of the service and that a procession through London will follow. International reports are that the late Queen will be buried with her husband, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, in a private service Monday evening. Well, Governor General His Excellency, the Most Honorable Sir Cornelius Smith and Clara Lady Smith left the capital today for London, where they're expected to attend the state funeral of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II on Monday, September 19th. Their Excellencies return on Thursday, September 22nd. Hi, this is Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean with a tropical weather update brought to you by BTC and CBS Bahamas. We are eyeing two areas in the tropics. The first one is a tropical wave to the south of the Capo Verde Islands. It's moving towards the west at some 15 miles per hour. Showers associated with the system, not well organized, but we're still giving it a 20% chance of development over the next few days. The second one is Tropical Storm Fiona, uh, which is about 465 miles east of the Windward Islands. It is moving west at 15 miles per hour, and at 5 o'clock this afternoon, it was packing winds of 50 miles per hour, and some slow intensification of Fiona is expected over the next couple of days as it continues that trek towards the west. Now, residents in the southeast Bahamas should continue to monitor the progress of Fiona over the next several days, particularly over the weekend, as it could have some impact on the southeast Bahamas as of early as Tuesday of next week. So once again, Fiona is moving west at 15 miles per hour, maximum sustained winds at 50 miles per hour. That has been a tropical weather update brought to you by BTC and CBS Partners. This portion of the news was brought to you by Sun Oil Limited Shell, fueling journeys that matter. You have enough things to worry about. Living in a world that can seem opposite of the things you are trying to accomplish. I can need a little help with this. We're here to let you know that you don't have to go at it alone. Choose peace of mind. Choose comfort. Wealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. Real time rules. Don't serve yourself first. Do not eat with your mouth open. Don't rest your elbows on the table. Don't make noise when eating. Does not apply when enjoying KFC buckets. When we bucket together, we are as we really are. Throughout our lifetime, we must all make decisions. No matter how we choose, the right one just needs to be made. Like having J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers as your insurance partner. We've been serving the Palmas for over 100 years. Whether you need home, motor, marine, or commercial insurance, make the right decision. Call 397-2100 or visit jsjohnson.com. J.S.J., Johnson Are you a contractor or new homeowner? Maybe you need a few pieces of lumber for your DIY projects. Welcome to Capital Lumber, the newest building materials company in the Bahamas. 
located on Parkgate Road, Nassau, helping you to maximize your savings on lumber, cement, shingles, tools, and much more. Your one-stop shop for all your building essentials. With free delivery to the mail booth, visit us today. Capital Lumber. Build strong. Time to save with a new perspective, where the focus is on values and principles, and people are just as important as profits. Where we believe in democracy and equality, and your vote counts. Where profits are shared with our members, who are also our owners, to ensure that by working together, we all win. Where education of our members and training our staff are one of our highest priorities. Where we serve our members' needs through continued cooperative initiatives because of our concern for the communities in which we live. Join more than 40,000 Bahamians who have made the smarter choice. Join the movement. Join a credit union. People helping people to help themselves. Another three New Providence residents have succumbed to the COVID-19 virus here in country, pushing that toll to now 833. The victims a 47-year-old man who health officials say died on July 22nd, an 85-year-old woman on July 29th, and a 71-year-old woman whose death is recorded as August 13th. Some 11 deaths remain under investigation. This in the face of a combined 16 new COVID infections, six on September 13th, the remaining 10 a day later. At last count, COVID hospitalizations were at 18. Again, two people are on the intensive care unit in the face of six recoveries. In other news, it's not the first time a draft bill has been brought to criminalize rape in the marriage, but this time around, social services officials and the Department of Gender and Family Island Family Affairs are garnering views from religious leaders, civil society, and others to hear their positions on the proposed amendment. Jiminita Swain has the details coming out of that symposium. I want to make it absolutely clear that most of us as church leaders do not believe in abuse inside or outside of marriage. If we say that God is love, the very notion of rape brings into the dynamic of violence, of exploitation, and those two concepts do not go hand in hand with God. First of all, where we need to go is to amend the act so that marital rape becomes an offense under the law. That's the key consensus of those persons participating in a one-day symposium discussing the proposed amendments to the sexual offenses legislation. Attorney General the Honorable Ryan Pinder shares more on what the proposed bill is expected to do. The exemption of spouse from the definition of rape, uh, so there would be no uh, spousal protection in the context of rape. Um, the second one was to address matters related to consent. Because over the years, there's been a lot of dialogue uh, and a lot of input on questions on um, false accusations and what exactly is consent in these circumstances. Now, we also had an opportunity to speak to a victim of rape who shared why it was important that marital rape be addressed in the law as well. I support the issue of marital rape being included into the law because I myself have been through a similar situation where I had to give myself in to someone who have already abused, not, not even only sexually, who have already hit me and abused me and draw blood and called me out of my name and then I had to lay down and have sex with this person unwillingly and my voice was not heard because, oh, you're supposed to be in this relationship, you're supposed to stand by him. Now more than 200 persons would have participated in the one-day symposium. At this point, the Attorney General says the discussion will continue and anyone that has outstanding issues or concerns with the proposed amendments should forward those on to the Attorney General's office. For the Bahamas tonight, I'm Jiminita Swain. Well, among those attending today's symposium, Social Services and Urban Development Minister, the Honorable Obi Volchkum, who says the intention is to include the religious community in not only the ever thorny issue of marital rape, but more comprehensively, gender violence. 
the church has perspectives, and it's imperative that we understand them all. And if we're going to move with any form of legislation, it's important that we have the dialogue. The point is to bring some level of intellectualism to, to it, uh, to allow for us to take a step closer. Uh, to have the uh, Attorney General here today was very significant to talk about the proposed legislation and to accept from the floor and to ask for other recommendations because it's not written in stone. What we're trying to do is arrive at the point where, the, where we look at matters we can't agree to and build upon what we can agree to and cause it to happen. Cleopatra Christie, administrator at the Bahamas Crisis Center, and Lloyd Smith, president of the Bahamas Baptist Convention, agree that there is general consensus that leads toward reform. Additional times needed, though, to include all voices. My overall impression was that there was a great majority of persons here today who agree that the law should be changed. I had 27 pastors here today. 27 Baptist pastors, most of them gone. But my problem is I, um, I represent all Baptists in the country. And this bill is not Nassau-centric. We switch gears now to news from the banking sector. Are changing times driving it to make things more efficient. But the switch over to other banking options is still being met with mixed reaction. Yet, as Carla Palma tells us, officials insist their methods are in the best interest of all. Kendra Adderley has been doing it for years now and loving it. I do everything online now and everything that, like banks that, but I had credit cards with that I don't have online banking with, I just close them out. I don't go to no utility place, pay all my credit card. It's a pity I can't order my grocery online. Ashley Gilbert, however, has strong reservations. She's one of those customers feeling forced to join the community of online banking. Yes, I am very hesitant. I would prefer going more so into the bank because I can get a better understanding of what I'm faced with or anything like that. Now that the online banking is being pressured, I should say, um, still have no clue exactly why. It's this uncomfortability that Governor of the Central Bank, John Rowe, says is concerning and asserts electronic banking platforms are indeed tools of progress. We should never say that we're forcing, and I know that is a word that is used and it sometimes feels that way, and it, 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 it's pointing to, in my view, the fact that the process needs to be more finessed in terms of how these changes occur. The progress here is not measured in terms of how many branches exist in the Bahamas versus not, or how many ATMs exist versus not, but in terms of the overall access to services. Governor Roll supports online banking as the wave of the future to advancing the sector locally and keeping pace with global industry trends. We have to accept that the process of moving from this world to the digital world does need um, much more fine tuning. Uh, but what we should not um, assume in that process though is that there is an option of staying where we are. For a country like the Bahamas, it is very important that we put the extra energy into equipping the population to transact in that fashion. If we do not, we are going to be uh, constraining our population to more inefficient, costly services. As the principal regulator, the central bank is promoting financial inclusion as the way forward. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Carla Palmer. BTC hosting a master class for local small business owners aimed at helping the group remain on the cutting edge in the global business arena. Fern Carey has the story.
Small business owners getting first-hand information Thursday from key leaders in the sector at a Small Business Innovation Masterclass hosted by BTC. The initiative is the first under BTC's innovation umbrella, attracting an impressive list of industry insiders. We usually celebrate our innovation conference during the month of October when we deem it as Small Business Month, but we realize that obviously one month is not able to really cater to the needs of our small business community because they make up more than 80% of our economy. And so we've been able to stretch out some aspect of the innovation theme throughout the months. And this is just one month that we're um, able to host a masterclass where we're taking persons from, you know, that, that Zoom scenario where you're watching slides and talking heads and we're putting persons in a room where you can actually take the time, a hands-on experience to work on the pain points of your business. Entrepreneurs also benefiting from expert guidance on how to market their business more effectively on the local and international market in order to boost their bottom line. We have Ayanthea Ferguson that's going to be coming and talking about you, the media, and your money and how you can leverage the media in order to take um, advantage of more awareness for your business, more brand Branding. Kenny Sinmark, he's going to be talking about branding toolkits that he offers by his company Antidote, where, you know, business owners, if you're looking for ways to brand your business beyond just a logo, he's talking about that and actually giving somebody in the room the ability to win a branding kit. Um, and then we also have Karan Sin, Karan Sin Rose. Um, he has actually deemed himself the Caribbean Digipreneur, where he teaches uh, entrepreneurs all over the Caribbean. Local vendors were happy to participate in the initiative. Scotia Bank has solutions for them as they go through the recovery time after COVID-19. We're here to provide our products and our services as well as our expertise to assist them through during this time. And in order to have a business, a valid business, you need a valid business license. So everybody that's operating that may be selling food, um, jewelry, clothes, you know, anything like that, you know, you have to have a license, a valid license to operate. Even persons who are having festivals like the Valley Fest that's coming up or your church may be having a cookout, you would need to know that you need an occasional license. And that's what we're here for. Organizers say the masterclass was so successful, they are already planning another one for next year. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Fern Carey. Well, now time for this week's poll question, and that's if the Bahamas were to become a republic, what type of republic should it be? A, constitutional republic, B, parliamentary republic, C, presidential republic, or D, a federal republic? To participate in the poll is quite simple. You just listen in for the question, as you just did, and then log on to our website, and that's www.znsbahamas.com, as well as any of our social media platforms to answer. That's all it takes. And remember, the poll's final results air on Friday. That's tomorrow. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, The National Report. Stay with us. for them even before they're old enough to talk. You spend a lifetime of sacrifice to pave the way for their success and create a tomorrow you too can be proud of. Can you tell who is the investor? At Lenham, we believe everyone who has ever put a penny aside for a future dream is an investor. If you're new to investing, Lenos financial experts stand ready to design plans based on your goals. Let's sit down and explore the options one-on-one -on -one and see how, together, we can make your dreams come true. Whether considering traditional investments like a new home, car, your own business, security and retirement, or your child's college fund, we take the confusion out of the process and make an investor out of you. Call 396-3225 for an appointment. Leno, your bridge to the future. A household name carries a lot of approval. And when you're shopping for household, you need a household name. For 50 years, Bahamas Welding and Fire has been a household name in outdoor grills and kitchen appliances. Need to beautify that yard space for your grill? 
BWF has it covered. For the industrial worker, you can find a complete line of tools and safety equipment. For the welder of any level or budget, you can find the right machinery to power everything. There's no shortage on power with a wide array of generators and safety is everyone's responsibility. Find everything needed to protect everyone on the worksite. Over 40,000 square feet of shopping space in a convenient location. Bahamas Welding and Fire. We're more than just our name. Located number 13 Wilton Street. Throughout all of our family islands, a Family Guardian Home Service agent can meet all your insurance needs. We offer life, health, and property and casualty insurance policies to help protect you, your loved ones, and your assets. With offices in Abaco, Eleuthera, Exuma, and Grand Bahama, and agents throughout the islands of the Bahamas, a Family Island agent is always nearby. Family Guardian, at your service, at your door. For any inquiries, WhatsApp us at 357-9632. Hello Summer! Escape into summer when you fuel up with Shell. Every time you purchase $20 gas, you're entered to win your share of over $50,000 in cash prizes and fantastic trips, including a staycation at Grand Island Exuma, a shopping spree in Miami, and a four-day trip to Las Vegas to see John Legend live. To enter, fuel up at Shell with $20. Go to winwithshellbahamas.com and let the fun begin. Say hello Summer with Shell today. Conditions apply. Hello, Summer. Come November, COP27 will take place in Egypt. The forum's ambitious agenda tackling everything from mitigating climate change impact response to clarifying a plan to address loss and damage to financing. More than 35,000 delegates are expected to attend many of their countries in the direct line of fire. But as our Lloyd Allen shares in this report, the Caribbean may be better suited to fund from within as hurricanes and other disasters continue to challenge our way of life. How do we use our own resources to be able to better invest? Barbados Prime Minister, the Honorable Neil Motley QC, challenged development funding methods while in attendance of the Caribbean Regional Heads of Government meeting in the Bahamas last month. She believes reliance on resources from the developed world is negatively impacting the rate of regional development. In Barbados, people for savings get 0.001%. <laughs> so we're paying the bank's money. As Motley sees it, herein lies an opportunity for governments to access significant funding at more competitive rates, equipping them with the tools to sustain development goals. The bottom line is that we have over a hundred billion U.S. dollars in savings in this region. She believes a favorable shift can come through education. Our populations need to also be sensitized and educated to be financially literate. Because really and truly, if you get a 4% return, you're getting 400 times what the bank is prepared to pay you. In the Bahamas, sustainable development goals for 2030 include converting renewable energy generation to islands like the recent upgrade on Ragged Island, now at 95% solar generation. But Molly contends that it simply may not be enough. Because we don't produce photovoltaic panels, we don't manufacture them, we don't manufacture batteries, we don't manufacture electric vehicles, and that is the major, major problem that we also face separate from the issue of financing. Meantime, Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis QC says all voices should be heard at the November conference, including that of countries grappling with the loss and damage from hurricanes and related effects of climate change. Prime Minister Motley spoke about um, future compensations um, and, and that a fund should be set up and what is the mechanism for that fund. Conversations have been had in the, in the sessions that 2% um, on oil export should be put into a fund. As with COP26, Prime Minister Davis has committed to voice concerns for the region before the global body with the hope that more is done to aid in the fight against climate change. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Lloyd Allen. 
Well, as we head to the break, we'd like to thank all our viewers watching us live on our social media platforms. And just in case you missed the news, be sure to head there to catch up. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, The National Report. Stay with us. Health is the greatest gift. That's where we come in. Bahamas Medical and Surgical Supplies is the premier distributor of medical equipment, as well as medical and surgical consumables. Our engineers are always on hand, providing top care service that saves lives. We carry a wide selection of over-the-counter and prescription items, IV fluids, and other injections. Our products are state-of-the-art, and our entire team stays on top of cutting-edge technology. With more than two decades of dedicated service, Bahamas Medical and Surgical Supplies continue to be a trendsetter and innovator in healthcare. We have set ourselves apart by truly caring for our customers. We understand the intricacies of healthcare and we produce spectacular results. We cherish our partnerships and nurture our friendships as we continue on our quest to help everyone maintain that wonderful gift of good health. Find us on 9th 5th Terrace Centerville, right in the heart of the Medical Service Epicenter of Nassau, Bahamas. Solomons, we're all about family. We believe in quality brands and giving you what you need and more for every occasion. Our store is filled with items for the entire family, celebrating everyday living for you and those you love. Shopping is now more rewarding than ever with My Solomon Smart Rewards. Shop Solomons because family matters. Samantha's always on point. She doesn't miss a thing. When she signs up for any insurance policy, she reads all the fine print. She knows what's covered, what's not covered, and she's aware of her deductibles. When it comes to insurance, it pays to know your policy. Review every insurance policy so you know what you're covered for. This message was brought to you by the Insurance Commission of the Bahamas. When you want to spend money on your tile supplies, who are you going to call? The Tile King. When you tile your house and you want to look good, who are you going to call? The Tile King. Visit the new Tile King showroom, which is internationally recognized as the finest tile showroom in the Caribbean, located in the Builders Mall on Wolf Road. The Tile King. on everything. Have you been denied a U.S. visa and don't understand why? Have you been turned away from the U.S. border without an explanation? Maybe you've had a prior arrest or conviction and you're not clear on how to move forward at this point. Call our office. We may be able to help. 954-449-1833. We elevate, elevate, we elevate, elevate, we elevate, elevate, we elevate, elevate. I'm Koval Pai from. BTC once again jumping at the opportunity to make history in the Bahamas by partnering with the government to make available free Wi-Fi to community parks across the country. The official launch of the Park Connect initiative took place recently on beautiful New Bike Cat Island at that settlement's park where Prime Minister and Cat Island Member of Parliament Philip Davis joined in the celebrations. So I'm excited to be a part of this program. I've worked with some exceptional professionals like Mr. Stiles um, from BTC and also um, uh, Terry Ann. Uh, they've been very helpful in, in advancing this project. And as you know, about two months ago, the cabinet gave a directive to have uh, Wi-Fi in at least one park in every constituency. And uh, through the human's efforts of BTC and also Cable Bahamas, we'll be able to fulfill that promise today. And so we're excited about carrying the project forward. Well, both the technical teams and B2B, we actually had to work day and night uh, to achieve this initiative in the time frame that the government placed on us. This was like a three to four week turnaround for a project that usually takes us about five to six months. So we actually had to work day and night, all teams, everybody involved, the technical team, Chantel, the Kirkwood Ferguson's, the Terry Ants, uh, 
even my team, Mr. Knowles, uh, my immediate manager. So we all had to come together as a group in BTC to accomplish this goal in this time period. To date, as many as two dozen parks across the country are Wi-Fi free, with many more to come in the coming weeks. These are still the moments that move us. I'm Koval Pfeiffer. Be well and be back here next BTC Connection. future financial advisor and business consultant named this year's winner of the Bahamas Financial Services Board's essay competition. A Lutheran native, Taisha Lewis Moxie was tasked with researching the Digital Assets and Registered Exchanges Act, new legislation that speaks to the direction the local financial services industry is headed. It was a little bit difficult because I wasn't familiar with it, but I did learn a lot doing the research and the interview process. I must say, I was asked a lot of questions about how I feel about our industry, where is our industry heading, but honestly, the interview really prepared me to think as a financial professional. As I start my career, I feel like I'm well-equipped, I'm prepared to really, you know, make something of our economy. It's time now for a check on Family Island weather, and for that, we turn to Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. Good evening, Basil. Uh, good evening, Patricia. We are currently under cloudy skies with a temperature of 86 degrees, relative humidity 57%. The winds are out of the south southeast at some 16 miles per hour. Barometric pressure of 1,016.9 millibars. That's 30.02 inches, and the pressure is steady. Temperatures around the family of Ireland, they are brought to you by Family Guardian Insurance Company. We're protecting you. Temperatures ranging once again from 84 degrees in the extreme northwest Bahamas to 89 degrees in the southeast Bahamas. And your boating forecast tonight is brought to you by Builders Mall, home of FYP, the Tile King, and the Paint Center. Tonight, for all areas, the winds are going to be southeast at 10 to 50 knots. The wave fights 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. Tomorrow, Friday through Saturday, for the northwestern parts of our country, once again, southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots and the wave fights 2 to 4 feet. Low tide will take place at 6.38 in the morning with a high tide at 103 in the afternoon. Now, for the central and southeastern islands on Friday through Saturday, the winds are going to be increasing out of the east at 12 to 18 knots. Wave fights building 3 to 6 feet over the ocean, so caution flags will go in place on Friday and Saturday for the central and southeastern Bahamas. And that's going to do it for your boating forecast, so stay tuned. Your extended weather forecast is still ahead. The world's best treasures are found in a good book. And American author and founder of Dream North Foundation, Nicole Linné, is sharing her first book with the Bahamas, Forgotten Baby. She tells us the inspiration behind the children's book. I have a daughter who's a former foster child. I've had her for six years. She was nine years old. She's lost her entire maternal family, and including nine siblings. Um, no, the contact has been cut off so now she has pretty much my she has her father still her father is here with me today um, and my family now so she's my daughter and uh, I think even though I was already writing this book um, before I met her I think this was something that was always just supposed to be in my life during an informational session for Bahamian librarians at the Wolf Road Library Nicole presented over 50 copies of her book to the National Library Association to be distributed to libraries throughout the country we just had a meeting with with all of the, well, about eight or nine of the administrators, the supervisors of these libraries, there's 50 total here. Um, and I just got to tell them about my book, tell them why we're here. They asked me questions about, you know, literary programs. And we just, we started talking about women and domestic violence. We just really got just more personal in our relationship and just figuring out how we can work together. We are so delighted and grateful to have her in, her, uh, in our midst and also to promote reading because we have a national reading challenge that will go through the summer to fall and we have some very fabulous prizes that we will offer to persons as an incentive to read more and so I think the whole day was so excited for exciting for all of us here. I'm Adama Williams for Ed Talk.
Welcome to the Cable Bahamas Business Solutions Cybersecurity Tip of the Day for Data Backups. Regularly backup your business's data. Set your backups to happen automatically and store them somewhere secure. When considering data backups, consider the rule of three, two, one. Have three local backups, two digital backups, and one offsite backup. Remember, stay safe, stay informed, and stay protected. Hey, it's your honorary pump attendant here to educate you on the do's and don'ts at the service station. Here's what you don't do. Do not pull up from the pump without first checking that the nozzle has been removed from your car. Because if you pop this, that's about $600 to $30,000 to replace. These things ain't cheap. What you want to do is make sure that the nozzle has been removed or just wait for the universal sign, which is the double tap. Our future is here. And no matter the result, we must come together. Together, we will innovate. Together, we will lead the way. Our future belongs to us. Happy Election Day, my fellow Bahamians. Leading the Bahamas in home improvement since 1973. Welcome to the Global Learning Exchange. We're partnering with BIBT to bring opportunities for higher education to the Bahamas. Earn your degree from a university in the U.S. right here at home. Visit us online to learn more. This is ZNS Total Sports. Welcome to sports, everybody. The Government League Basketball best of five semifinals back on floor last night at the Donald Davis Gym. The Oak Tree Crime Stoppers dug deep and came back to win game two and even their series with the Ministry of Youth Sports and Culture Panthers at one game with an 86-76 win. You don't want to go down 0-2 in a five-game series because it's be tough to win three games straight. So we came out, we played, we, uh, we had practice and we did what we supposed to do. We played defense. We stopped the shooters from hitting our shots. What, what cost us the first game? The game started on a defensive, with a defensive battle. And it went down to one or two calls that really changed our game around. Some of our key players get out of the game, and cost us had to make some adjustments that we really didn't want to go to. The other half of the semifinals saw game one between the Ministry of Economic Affairs, Baines and Grandstown Cybots, and the B Dog Challengers. This one going the way of the Cybots. It was a close game. Um, these guys, they played a hell of a basketball game. We was missing two of our starters the first half of the game. And Coach always said, you know, to maintain our composure. Um, they, they was in the zone all night, so that, that played to my strengths. So once they swing the ball, you know, he had wide open threes all game. It went good until the uh, um, second half. We were actually up 10, but um, we let them. Uh, uh, the shooters get in a rhythm, um, and we didn't capitalize at the other end. We got a little winded as well, but we'll be back for game two to settle the score. It's a must win for John Quill Jones, the Connecticut Sun, tonight in the WNBA Finals. After losing their first two games of the series on the road against the Las Vegas Aces, the Sun returning home, where they are 5-2 and two on their home court in the playoffs and 3-0 and oh in the elimination games. The Sun hoping to win the next two games at home and return to Vegas for our winner-take-all Game 5. We have another opportunity. That's why it's a series. And um, like I said before, we're going home, we're going in front of our fans, and we're going to use that to help us win the game. The NBA champion Golden State Warriors announcing that they have hired Michael Thompson as their new video coordinator. Mike, of course, is the older brother of five-time All-Star swingman Clay Thompson. And he's already been around the Warriors in the past, serving as a volunteer last season, primarily aiding Clay in his injury recovery. The elder Thompson is coming off an appearance with the Bahamian national team in FIBA World Cup qualifiers. He also had a pro basketball career of his own. After playing four years at Pepperdine, he went undrafted in 2011, but went on to make five appearances with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Michael then spent several seasons in the NBA G League and even had a stint in Italy before officially retiring in 2018. Now talking about the Thompson brothers, the youngest of the bunch, Trace, hit his 10th home run of the season last night for the L.A. Dodgers. That came in a 5-3 extra inning loss to Arizona.
Well, for the third time, a group of Bahamian players will wear the uniform of Great Britain when qualifying gets underway for the World Baseball Classic tomorrow in Germany. Chavez Fernander, Tanaj Thomas, Earl Forbes, Anthony Seymour, and Deshaun Knowles on the team. Albert Cartwright, who played for Great Britain in 2013 and 17, will serve as the coach this time around. Great Britain in Group A with the Czech Republic, Spain, South Africa, France, and the host. Their first game tomorrow is against France. The 2022 track and field season all but done, and the World Athletics Federation has its top list out for the year. Sean and Miller Weibo finishing the year second in the 400, the world champion at best time of 49.11. The only other female in the top 20, Devin Charlton, who had a breakout year, a new national record, 12-4-6, which ranks her at number 11. On the senior men's side, despite having to shut down the season early, Speedy Stevie Garden finishing number 5 in the 400, a time of 44-2-1. Laquan Nair making a name for himself this season, the Commonwealth Games champ, 8th in the long jump, a distance of 26 feet 4 and 3 quarter inches. As for our junior athletes, Keyshawn Strawn, now a freshman at Auburn University, 2nd in the javelin, a toss of 262-1. World champ in the 110 hurdles, Anton Andrews, he is Second that event as well, 13.23. Clemson sophomore Wanya McCoy is 13th in the 200 at 20.48. And Chiron Camp just breaking in the top 20 in the triple jump at number 19, a leap of 51 feet 8 and a quarter inches. Have you ever heard of parkour? Well, if not, it's an athletic training discipline where practitioners traverse obstacles in a man-made or natural environment through the use of running, vaulting, jumping, climbing, ruling, or other movements in order to travel from one point to another in the quickest and most efficient way possible without the use of equipment. And thanks to the Bahamas Gymnastics Federation, a three-day course will take place right here in the Bahamas starting on September 29th. Invitations have been sent to our Pan-American federations, local member clubs, and private and public school physical education instructors. We are very excited about this sport as it is anticipated to become an Olympic sport in 2028. We see it all the time, young men flipping on the beaches, flipping on the streets, flipping off of walls, you know, in our parks and stuff like that. And we want these young people and other young persons that would be interested to be able to practice this new and upcoming sport in a safe environment with instructors that can coach them safely. David Capert and D'Angelo Griffin getting their feet wet recently at an international powerlifting event in Florida. Both gentlemen spoke about how they got into the sport. From what I used to watch back in the days, it was very exciting. And I was like, I would really, I'd really like to dabble into that world, you know, really see what it's all about. And from there, it just took off. Working out in general, in order to make it a lifestyle, you have to find a style that you like. So there's CrossFit, there's bodybuilding, and there's powerlifting. And you kind of, when you once you get in the gym, you spend enough time in the gym, you kind of see where you naturally fit in. And for me, it was always strength training. Let's look at sports check on weather up next. This is ZNS Total Sports. Being the CFO at this young age, it really is very fulfilling to me and it really shows that the hard work, uh, the hours that I put in in my career, um, they really paid off. Having such young persons in such a key role really shows that the, the board of directors have a lot of trust in the leadership of the young people. Being committed to excellence means that you put all of your effort into whatever it is you're doing to get the best benefit out of that task or anything you're doing in life. AID has everything you need and more to complement your home's decor. Luxurious bamboo bath towel, face towels from $1.25 and bath towels from $5.45. Shower curtains from $2.54 and organizers in stylish finishes. Bath mat sets from $7.27 in a multitude of styles and colors. Bed sheet sets from $9.95 and seven-piece comforter sets from $49.95. Doormats from $1.93 with matching runners and hundreds of area carpets. Sofa covers from $19.95, plain and crushed 
sheer curtains from $525 and thousands of panels to choose from. Blinds from $702 and curtain rods from $289. Ceramic and porcelain dishes, tablecloths, napkins, placemats, utensils, and more. A wide selection of drinking glasses, including elegant stemware, candle holders, vases, and crystal. Full-size mirrors, decorative pictures, and picture frames. AID, Wolf Road, and the Mall at Marathon open late and on Sundays to serve your decorating needs. AID, all you really need and more. Opa! your company representative stand out through an embroidery design on your uniforms from Janae's Uniform Center, Chesapeake Road. Janae's utilizes the latest state-of-the-art embroidery technology to monogram large and small quantities of shirts, caps, bags, and other articles. If you don't already have a digitized logo, Janae's can design and digitize your idea and bring it to life. Then install the logo of your choice from their large selections of 27 stock colors of golf shirts in cotton or dry fit, caps, or workwear. Call 394-8385 or 6 or visit www.janae's.com. Mario thought he could have his cake and eat it too. He almost found out the hard way that if you don't insure your home for the full replacement value, when it comes time to make a claim, you won't get the full payout. It's called the condition of average. If your $200,000 home is destroyed by a hurricane, but you only insured it for $100,000, half the value, you'll only get half of that $100,000 payout. Actually, less than that, because there's also a deductible, which will be deducted from your payout. Check your home insurance policy for the condition of average clause and ask your insurance agent or broker how condition of average would affect you. This message was brought to you by the Insurance Commission of the Bahamas, protecting the interests of policyholders. A penny saved? Forget pennies. Save dollars at Super Value and Quality Supermarkets. Kraft Macaroni and Cheese, 7 ounce, 99 cents. Mott's Apple Juice, 64 ounce, 4.99. Carter Bath Tissue, 4 pack, 2.49. Turkey Wings, 1.99 per pound. Fresh Celery, 1.99 each. Donate your change to help feed the Humane Society animals at Super Value and Quality Supermarkets. Sports is back. Hi, my name is Evan Wisdom, Senior Education Officer with responsibility for Interscholastic Sports, Department of Education, Ministry of Education, Commonwealth of Bahamas. This school year, we will be introducing a number of new sports as well as our regular core sports. We start off with volleyball, boys and girls. We go to basketball, boys and girls. We also have soccer, boys and girls. We also have baseball slash softball, baseball for boys, softball for girls. We also, of course, have the track and field. Apart from those series of scheduled events, we have national championships in each one of our core sports, and we have two editions this year. We have national championships in basketball, volleyball, track and field, soccer, baseball, slash softball. We have two additional national championships this year. We have tennis, and we also have swimming. We are proud to announce those two additional sports in our national championship series. Apart from those, we have golf, which started as a pilot and is now a full-fledged national championship. So we are proud that sport is back. And we're hoping that all of our student athletes have a great 2022-2023 school year. We look forward to seeing what the games and let's all celebrate that sport is back.
Hello, Keisha, you something else, boy. Who this is? Tamika? You don't even remember my name? Wow, Dread. Girl, I've been so busy. You still planning your trip? Girl, and I can't wait. I right here online booking my car. You dare planning trip. You vaccinated? Girl, we hot too. We ain't been nowhere since this pandemic star. Girl, and we got a 14-day vacation. Best vacation ever. <laughs> girl, are you though? Well, I know you's gonna get the vaccine, cause you too like travel. When y'all get your vaccine? Girl, long time. Cause you gotta get your first dose, wait. Then get your second dose at least two weeks before you travel. Johnny get his vaccine and he 12. Even Grammy get hers. <laughs> Child and Grammy say she ain't get no money. But I see her hiding under the mattress. Child, let me send my list, cause I know you going in shopping. Keisha, don't play with me. Vaccinate today, live tomorrow. A message by Paho WHO, Canada and US Aid. It's time for your final look at weather. Satellite pictures showing that troughing still remain across the extreme northwest Bahamas and will continue to support pockets of showers and thunderstorms tonight through uh, tomorrow. And uh, you can expect uh, some of those showers to be heavy at times. Forecast for tonight, we're going in for partly cloudy conditions, a low temperature around 81 degrees. And tomorrow, it's going to be a mixed bag of clouds and sunshine with afternoon showers and thunderstorms popping up once again. The high temperature tomorrow, 88 degrees. And your extended weather forecast, those Isolated showers and thunderstorms will continue in the afternoon right into Saturday, but things will improve on Sunday as we head into the early part of next week. There will be a lot more sunshine in our forecast. McKistra. Well, that does it for the Bahamas tonight. Thank you for continuing to make ZNS your first choice for news and information. Only the sun covers the Bahamas better than ZNS. From all of us here at ZNS, thank you for watching and good night. You're watching the ZNS Network, the People's Station. It's time for Focus Forward, sponsored by Invest Grand Bahama. It's Grand Bahama's best talk show, highlighting all of the positive things happening in Freeport.